I'm Adina Millet. Um, and Millet's uh, Living Beyond Our Means. Um, the title for her installation is her first new, new work uh, since returning to Los Angeles from New York a couple of years ago. Um, in the past, um, she's been a standout in numerous group exhibitions, including the well-received Greater New York Show at PS1 and the Studio Museum in Harlem, also the California American, um, African American Museum and the Santa Monica Museum of Art. I'm Adia Millet. Thank you, Tyler. I'm not really a big fan of poetry. There's a few poets I like, but I don't usually like poetry. But I think that for the past few years at least, my work has kind of become visual poetry. Um, and that's the, that, you know, it, it, it's not specifically trying to tell a story, but it's definitely suggesting um, some kind of emotion. And I, was, I started out building miniatures and was trying to figure out a way to have the artists enter the space. And so I started doing installation, and as I started to read and learn about installation art, which, you know, has a long history, but has only kind of been recognized as installation more, you know, in the last hundred years, I, I realized that in, the reason why it was installation was because you could walk inside of it. And I wanted to capture, I wanted to capture that and make it flat again. So I was trying to figure out a way to, to do both, to, to, to make it flat, but also to be able to enter the space and, and become part of, the, you know, to get into inside of the frame. And that's what, that's kind of what, what this piece is doing for me. Instead of it being just entering the miniature or the sculpture, it's actually becoming part of, of the piece. Um, and as I was starting to do this, I really wanted it to somehow reference uh, being in Riverside, but it didn't let me. <laughs> it, it, it kind of, you know, I oftentimes with the work, there's, you know, something floating in the space and it kind of becomes surreal and becomes a dream, but this space just remained empty and I felt like just by walking into the space and seeing yourself inside of it, um, you kind of became part of the work. Um, and it created, it, for me, it really stirred up a certain sense of emotion and, um, and was kind of theatrical and like entering a film. So I, I, I let the beauty and the kind of seduction of it do the work, which now that I'm sitting in, in, in the rest of the, the space and seeing everything else that is happening it, and knowing my training, going to CalArts and you know, kind of studying under Charles Gaines and Michael Asher and, and then doing this, you know, it seems like such a contradiction. But for, for me, you know, working with you know, conceptual artists and doing something like this is even more rewarding because I, I find the connection, even though it might be a little bit, a little harder to, for everyone to, to see. But, um, you know, I think it, for me, I, I wanted the viewer to have to be forced to use their imagination and to really, um, to go somewhere outside of reality, but you know, realize that you're just kind of still within that framework. And living, uh, living beyond our means came partially just thinking about language and how the multiple uh, definitions that we have for even a single word, word, like means, can kind of help us to connect different ideas. So means can, can be used within kind of a mathematical realm, thinking about averages, or it could be used in terms of thinking about wealth, or it could be used, you think of um, a means to an end. All these different ways that we kind of interpret that. So for me, I was trying to think beyond just, you know, spending more money than I have, but also thinking about trying to step outside of, outside of my own boundaries, um, or for all of us, how we kind of allow ourselves to live beyond our means and the kind of the benefits to that, um, and even in, in the sense of living beyond our means in terms of our kind of notions of what reality is, or what our values are. So that, and, and then, you know, and how that perspective change changes by how we shift. So just by the literal shifting, just by moving from looking inside of, looking into um, an installation, and the perspective we have there, and then when we walk inside, how that perspective changes. 
when we sit down and, and how the scale changes and our size changes or how look, having someone else look at us inside the frame, how we change. Um, and that that process is, for me, and I think for all of us, is constantly shifting. So this, that space of transition, of perspective. So I'm trying to kind of make a, um, a parallel or, you know, this, this is kind of a metaphor. This is a visual metaphor for the idea of transition. So the idea of trying to be richer or trying to look younger or trying to be more spiritual or whatever it is that we're constantly in the process of doing and how just by maybe walking 10 feet that, that shifts. So visual poetry, that's probably the easiest way to say it. Thank you, Dia.